Hey, how's it going? Hope you guys are doing well. It's been a while since I made this video. Uh, first of all, Happy New Year to you guys, 2024. Hopefully great things are coming soon for you guys and hopefully 2023 was great as well. I hope you guys had a good Christmas break. Uh, I know I did. So yeah, as the title of this video suggests, I'm moving on from Fujifilm. I'm moving on from Fujifilm. And it's been a while since I made a video like this, so hopefully I don't stumble my way through it. And yeah, as usual, let's roll that B-roll. So yeah, I sold my Fujifilm cameras, I sold my Fujifilm gear, and I decided to get a Sony camera. And there are a few reasons why I decided to move to Sony instead of sticking with Fujifilm. Even though I paid a lot of money for the Fujifilm, it just made it unviable? Is that even a word? Unviable? Inviable? It made it not make sense to have a Fujifilm camera in Indonesia. And there are so many reasons but I'll stick to three main reasons why I decided to sell my Fujifilm and get the Sony. And before I tell you what Sony camera I got, the B-roll you just saw obviously was shot on that Sony camera. And if you saw a few weeks ago, I actually posted a short film on my YouTube channel using this particular Sony camera. And if you follow me on Instagram, you probably would have noticed that I actually post <laughs> this camera a lot on my Instagram story. So as much fun as I was having with the Fujifilm cameras, I ran into three main issues with it, and those are autofocus, IBIS, and complexity. And I should probably mention now that these reasons are actually mainly for video, not, for, not particularly for photos. I actually had no issues with photos. So first up is autofocus. So this is no news. We all know Fujifilm's autofocus is not the best, but Fujifilm's X-H2S did actually pretty well in terms of autofocus, but their lenses were lacking so far behind. That was one of the main issues I had. You know, I had to do a client shoot and that autofocus was just hunting continuously. When there's a white background, it was continuously hunting. It's pretty bad. And not that Sony's not prone to autofocus, especially in continuous autofocus mode, but it's so bad like even when a subject comes into frame, it's still hunting. It was really, it was so bad, it made the footage practically unusable. I should probably also mention when that issue occurred, there was a firmware update for the XH2S and the uh, 16 to 80, which I had at the time. And I had, to, and I updated both firmwares. So it might be an issue with firmware, but I don't know, I feel like that's the kind of issue that shouldn't be even be happening in the first place. And it's just very frustrating. And it's not a good look, especially in front of a client when you have a big monitor, director's monitor. When the client sees that the focus is hunting a lot, it's, 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 not, it's not a great look. And the second reason is IBIS. Now, I know I mentioned that the X-H2S's IBIS is pretty decent and uh, you shouldn't have any issues with the IBIS. Yeah, I was really wrong after trying out this particular Sony camera that I'm using right now. After using this camera's auto, uh, IBIS, I realized how much of a difference IBIS makes. The X-H2S's IBIS had so many issues. It would constantly fight with my movements. I would pan left, it would want to go right. I would pan right, it would want to go left. It's actually very frustrating. Again, it might be a firmware issue, but I don't know. It's just something that seems very, uh, very, very terrible. I set everything in the IBIS to be at the lowest, and it still gave me so much micro jitters that practically unusable if you're shooting, especially if you're shooting in 6.2K, 25 frames per second. You get so much micro jitters rendering the images practically unusable. And the third and final reason is it's so complex to use. Now let me be upfront and say, ignoring all of these issues of the X-H2S, the Fujifilm renders a really amazing image. It looks 
fantastic. I, I actually love how good the Fujifilm looks. But there is a lot of work to get that image to look good. Not that using a Sony camera would be less work. Okay, maybe a little less work, but it's a camera that really makes you think. And not think in a sense of how you can get the shot to look good, but in the complexity of the menu system and everything in it. Like you have to remember whether you shot in, if you're, if you're shooting in H.265 or if you're shooting in ProRes, you have to make sure you have the right data level settings. You have to make sure that you have noise reduction set to its minimum. You have to make sure that you have a large enough hard drive because that the files coming out of the XH2S are so massive, even, even at H.265. And you basically can't shoot in HD if you wanted like low, lower quality videos because for some reason they nerfed the, the HD in Fujifilm and it's 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 weird. So I'll practically be shooting a 6.2K or 4K. Anything out of HD for some reason just looks like crap. I don't know why, but that's a major flaw from the XH2S and Fujifilm cameras in general. I don't know why you can't really shoot in HD to get its best quality. It's it's strange to me. Now I know these aren't really massive issues, but they're big enough that make working with the XH2S no longer fun and more complex and it's such a hassle when you have to think about that instead of thinking about how your videos will turn out. Okay, so now that my rant about the Fujifilm cameras are is out of the way, it's time to talk about this camera, this Sony camera that I decided to get. Now, I got to do a little bit of clarification first. I know I mentioned in the previous video that I didn't really like the look of a Sony camera and the images it produces. Well, here's Here's the thing. The last time I used a Sony camera was in 2019. It was a Sony A6500 and the original A7S. So you can see where that problem lies with video. I was only able to get 8-bit 420 images out of those cameras and obviously doesn't look too good. And it's no wonder why I was having trouble with color grading and trouble matching up those cameras. But now this camera that I got, it's just fantastic. And after a lot of consideration, a lot of testing, and you know, having a friend who has this camera as well, try it out, and I tried it out myself and used it on many occasions, it's a no-brainer. This camera is literally a no-brainer. And this camera that I got is the Sony FX30. Now, I know this camera has been out for about a year or more, so, Obviously, there are a lot of YouTubers out there talking about this camera and You know, I do definitely recommend you guys go watch those videos, especially Kofi Kofi Yeboa, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry if I pronounce it wrong. Kofi Kofi Yeboa and Philip Arpek Those two YouTubers man, you guys got to watch those videos their videos on the FX30, they're very technical, very detailed, and you should definitely check them out. Uh, I'll put a link to their channels down in the description below. Go watch their videos, go say hi to them, and if you do, if you do go watch them because of me, well, tell them I sent you. But maybe you're watching this video because you don't need to know the technical specs of the Sony FX30, or maybe you're considering moving from Fujifilm to Sony. Now, I can give you a few reasons why you should move to the Fujifilm like if you're doing video anyway, give you a few reasons why to move from Fujifilm to Sony. But that's, again, that's all up to you. And these are my reasons why I decided to move from the Fujifilm X-H2S and the X-T3 to the Sony FX30. Now the first reason is ease of access. So what do I mean by ease of access? I live in Indonesia. Predominantly, every videographer and filmmaker in Indonesia uses a Sony camera. So rental houses usually stock up on a lot of Sony gear. Do you know how hard it is to find a specific piece of gear tailored to Fujifilm in Indonesia? It's practically practically impossible. There's only one one rental house that really has it, and even then, it's they only have like two lenses, two of the, that exact lenses. So it's a bit difficult. And also finding specific secondhand gear for Sony heaps easier so much easier to find secondhand gear for Sony. They may not be in the best quality, but at least they're a lot cheaper. And the second reason is the smaller file sizes. 
honestly this is probably the biggest benefit of these Sony cameras now right now I'm actually shooting in 4k 25p but you can still shoot in HD and still get a really really good looking image out of it you don't have to tweak anything everything is all set all you gotta make sure to do is have it at 10 bit 422 and it still can grade as log 3 pretty damn well and you're not stuck to 6.2k or 4k if you're shooting an event, sometimes HD is more than enough. Especially if you have to do a same day edit, you're pretty much great because HD footage is so much lighter than 4K footage, you don't have to wait for data transfer. I should also probably mention moving forward, I'll be shooting these talking heads in HD instead of 4K just for the small file sizes for me uh, and easier editing. But also, in if I have to do a client shoot, I will definitely be shooting 4K. 50p or 25p depending depending on the client right depending on what I'm shooting but most of the time it'll be in 4k and doing these YouTube videos it'll be in HD and the third thing is catalyst brows like wow I never expected to see catalyst brows be something so useful and so incredible to do to use it's so easy to use now the issue is though with catalyst brows although you can use it with some specific third-party lenses may not be the best option you do have a massive crop just shoot wider obviously but sometimes you gotta frame your shots properly if you do intend to use catalyst brows so keep that in mind but still catalyst brows ah so good and the fourth thing is cine ei now I've never actually heard of Cine EI until I tried out the FX30 and it is so freaking amazing. Now I actually didn't understand how to use Cine EI until I watched Philip Arpeck's explanation of Cine EI and it just makes so much sense. You don't play with ISO range, you don't play with the noise, but you play with the dynamic range instead and it's just amazing. And I definitely recommend you guys to watch that video again description in the description below to the link of Philip's video shout out to Philip you, you did an amazing job but I'm gonna just simplify it so you guys can watch that video as well basically here's the chart you know when you have Cine EI on you basically only have those two EI values but I'm gonna call it ISO just to make it easier you only have those two ISO values your main video is going to be either an ISO 800 or ISO 2500 because those are the dual native ISOs of the FX30. Now, when you adjust your ISO value, although in camera it looks like it's getting brighter or darker, you're actually still on that same ISO value of 800 or 2500. But you're getting more details in the shadows and less in your highlights if you lower it or if you increase it, you're getting more details in your highlights and less in your shadows. Now that's the simplest idea of Cine EI. There are definitely a lot more things that you need to, to, to be aware of if you do decide to use Cine EI to shoot. So definitely go watch Philip's videos because he really explains it very well and you definitely need to know everything he has to say because those things are very, very important to get the best quality image out of your FX city. Now, although I find this camera great, I do have some issues with it and honestly I'm just nitpicking here but those issues do eh, not great for this camera but the first thing is Sony lenses so this is a gross generalization of the Sony lenses I just feel like they're very sharp they are technical marvels in terms of autofocus and speed and size but they're just so sharp that I have to use a black mist filter to make it look slightly better and I find that the bokeh it's too eh. there's no character behind it you know so sometimes I will actually just use my Canon FD glass to to make the footage pop a bit more and you know what the lenses I got from my Sony FX30 is actually not Sony lenses they're Sony mount lenses but they're not Sony I got the Tamron 17 to 70 mm f2.8 and this lens right here which is the Viltrox 13 mm f1.4 and I'm actually using a black mist filter to make that light that hair light look 
nicer, more glowy. And Sony lenses are pretty expensive, especially the G-Masters, but thankfully they're not as expensive as Canon RF glass. Thank you, Sony, for not making them that expensive. Next thing is low light. Obviously, you only get the dual ISO levels at 800 and 2500. Even the X-H2S does it at 800 and 3200, if I'm not wrong. But obviously, you know, because it's Sony, it should be more. You ex we expect more from Sony, especially with a, a cinema line camera. But obviously they didn't, but you know, thinking about it, they definitely didn't want to cannibalize the FX3s. So it's, it made sense to make it 800 and 2500. The next thing is that there is no open gate. Now to be very, very honest, when I was using the X-H2S, I pretty much didn't use open gate. I practically just used 16 by nine, 4K, 50. Uh, but, you know, it was nice to have because there were a few times that a client actually did ask for a nine by 16 video. So having that open gate option was pretty helpful. But, you know, don't really need it. You don't really need it, but it's nice to have to get that three by two aspect ratio so you can crop it and get the full width of the sensor and get really good quality footage out of the uh, FX30. Because, I mean, this is a 6K sensor. They could have done it, but obviously for some reason they didn't. So I'm just gonna let it go because even then I rarely use it. So letting it go. And the last nitpick is memory cards. Uh, this one annoys me a little bit actually, because being to be able to shoot in XAVCI, you need to get a V90 card or higher. And what I mean higher is CF Express Type A, which is arguably very, very, very expensive. And you know, the only reason to get a CF Express Type A card for me is if you're going to be shooting films in DCI or if you're going to be shooting in 4K 120p in XAVCI, then definitely go for the CF Express Type A. But that being said, you really don't see that much of a difference between XAVCS and XAVCI. Personally, I don't see that much difference anyway. And you know, being video, you don't really need to pixel peep. So yeah, I, I think a V90 card is plenty enough, but even a V60 card, I think you can get away with if you're going to be shooting for like events, doing client work. Sometimes they don't even need to know how big the files are. And I should also mention in, if you're going to shoot with a V60 card, you can shoot in XAVC HS. You can shoot 4K 120 in XAVC HS, but there is a bit of an issue with HS and S where you do get a little bit of a green tinge, whether you're in 25, 50 or 100 frames per second, you do get that green tinge in HS. So just be aware of that and just set your tint down to more magenta and you should be good. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the FX30. Although I do have some nitpicks about this camera, I do think it's a fantastic camera. And without the complexity of the menus like the uh, X-H2S, like the Fujifilm cameras, it's actually a fantastic camera to use and work with. And I just have so much more fun shooting video with it. You know, it's been a while since I actually do have so much fun shooting videos. I know whatever camera I use, I say that it's amazing. But I really do think this camera is really, really good. Just from everything, every user experience perspective, Sony really thought about it. And I never really appreciated how easy it is to use the, Fuji, the, the Sony camera, sorry. How easy it was it is to use a Sony camera compared to a Fujifilm. Now, albeit the old menu system suck, but this new menu system really, really works. And I know I trashed the Fujifilm X-H2S early in this video, but honestly, I still think it's a fantastic camera. It's, it's a great camera. If they just decided to not make it so complex, if they decided to lower the price, because that is such an expensive camera, and if they decided to make the IBIS work better, make the autofocus better, release a bunch more lenses for video for the X-H2S, I think that camera could have been amazing, so much more amazing than this Sony FX30. But 
the matter of fact is, the truth is, this FX30 just blows it out of the water. And at half, almost half the price? That's just mind-blowing, honestly. But yeah, what do you guys think? Do you have an FX30 or even the A6700? Because they both have the same sensor. So what do you guys think of the footage? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya!